Okay, we're back live here in Las Vegas, uh, Nevada, for HP Discover 2012. I'm John Furrier, this is theCUBE, SiliconAngle.tv's production, we go out to the events uh, and extract the signal from the noise. I'm here and joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikimon.org, and we're here with Bruce Dahlgren. Now Bruce is in the imaging and printing group. He's the senior vice president of the enterprise side of that business. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, it's good to be here. Great to have you, John. And again, you're excited. You got you know, your old stomping ground, HP yeah, printing. <laughs> I mean, I you know, go back, my history in HP printing goes back you know, 1988, 89, back in the old days, Series 2, LaserJet. And obviously, that the, the storied history from HP really is, and I've been on record and blogging about it, saying that if it wasn't for the, the LaserJet, HP would have been like Data General and DEC, Digital Equipment Corporation, uh, a mini computer company that wouldn't have made it. LaserJet has created such great wealth for not only just HP, channel partners and distribution channels save their PC business, and a lot of people just don't know that history and spawn the ink jets and the office jets and, and that whole franchise has really generated a lot of uh, revenue for the company. And, and, uh, but printing's changing. We had uh, an earlier discussion today with uh, the GM of the printer group, and, and we're talking about the business models where the expansion of the role of printing sure. from just standalone printer to network printers now to completely cloud, different user experiences, different business use cases Absolutely. are driving essentially new economics and new opportunities. So um, that's what you do. That's you, right. You, <laughs> you connect printing as a commodity into essentially uh, enterprises and business functions. So explain to the folks out there, you know, basically what this new, uh, not really new, it's just really a, an extension of, of a connected workforce. Sure, sure. I, I think the way that I would describe it, if, uh, if you think back over the last 25 years or so, a lot of infrastructure built up in the enterprises. Printers, copiers, fax, uh, scanning. And uh, all of this can be brought together in a multifunction device. But the customers want to be able to handle it different. They want it to be more strategic. And so uh, over the last several years, we've built a great solution, probably one of the best growth stories, uh, really, in the industry and certainly for HP, called Managed Print Service. And we can come in and manage that environment for them, make it much more productive, take up to 30% of the cost out, and uh, all of a sudden now, customers are starting to look at this as being a lot more strategic. Yeah, and that's actually natural evolution. I mean, you know, I talked to a bunch of customers about their printing environment over the years, and, and the budgets are huge. When I mean, you got toner costs, Absolutely. you got hardware costs, and there's a whole green factor, even though you got the, you know, the, the sleep mode and all, still, there are printers everywhere, right? Um, but people are working at home, they're on the go. That's right. Uh, you got cloud, so uh, it just makes sense, right? That printing will be cannibalized a bit, yes. but now you have a new revenue stream and a new business model on, that the market's dictating, which Absolutely. is, give me stuff on the go, give me that matches my workflow. Yep. Can you explain some of the examples of sure, what you sure. guys are seeing these, these successes? I, you know, I think one of the exciting things about this is that the ideas come from our customers. And uh, to give you an idea in managed print service today, around the globe, we have over 3,100 customers, over $9 billion of contract value. We, we uh, annually uh, manage over 25 billion pages. And what, what the customers are saying is, you know, Bruce, that's really great that you're helping us and you can do all this, but that's really focused in on the office. And today I have my workforce, they're mobile. They're on the go, they're virtual, they're traveling. And I want to be able to tie this management service into uh, you know, the way that our employees operate. And so what we did is working with HP Labs, we developed this ePrint Enterprise. And it's a great example, quite frankly, of bringing all of the power of HP through managed print service into a way to help our customers be more efficient and, uh, and quite frankly, more productive. Well, we've seen a bunch of carnage in this area. Obviously, Xerox never really crossed over, but they, you know, they were going to that, you know, on the copier model, you know, yeah, coming yeah, in yeah. from the outsourcing services back when you had you know, copy centers. You know, I think that was the multifunction version of Xerox. But in a way, in a way this is kind of where they missed the opportunity and you're kind of stepping in. Can you just talk about that? Is sure. It, is it accurate, is it a little different? How different is it? Well, you know, the, the two models, the copier and the printer model, really developed in different ways, right? The copier model was high acquisition price, low cost per copy. The printer industry grew up with a low acquisition price and then the annuity streams of supplies. It's interesting, this managed print service really brings those two business models together and allows us to manage this in a services capability, but in a distributed fleet of devices. We had uh, Ron Coughlin on earlier, the SVP GM of uh, the LaserJet Group, and, and uh, I asked him, he didn't really answer the question because he kind of dodged it. Um, we liked Ron, by the way, he was fantastic. We were <laughs> Ron's a about good the, friend. The glory days. Um, but it was really in context of something that Google announced. Google announced their cloud print sure. kind of initiative. And it's kind of out there, no one really kind of knows what it is, and, but they're really targeting developers. 
So I asked them about the developers. Is there a developer focus in this program? Is it yeah. all turnkey? Is it prefabricated? What well, are some me, of the relationships? You, sure, let me give you a sense, and this is again a great example of the power of HP and HP Labs and, and the work that, uh, that my team has done. I'm really proud of this. You know, we talked about these um, end users, these enterprises on the go. Uh, just to give you an idea, say there's seven billion people in the world, what, six billion uh, mobile phones? Almost a billion of those are smartphones. And what we were thinking through is, isn't there a way that we could leverage the cloud with all the security that customers need and find a way for these mobile users, these, these virtual workers, to be able to print from their smartphone? And we absolutely did that. Um, what's really exciting about this is that, you know, with just a very simple three clicks, an end user can take their smartphone, be able to uh, select what they're going to print, send it into a secure cloud, a private cloud for HP, and then uh, select a public print location, something like a FedEx office location, or we just announced UPS uh, as another partner of ours, Hilton Hotels. And then they can, like a GPS, find a device while they're on the go, be able to uh, then uh, download that print to that public print location and that device that they've selected, and then go and retrieve it. Now you might say, well isn't there a concern, right? If they go- Is that public or within the firewall? Or well, it, it's both. So we could do it in one of their offices, and of course this is all part of management service, or it could be in a public environment. And a lot of the customers came back and said, this is really good, but we need the security. Like we don't want to have something being printed out in Hong Kong by accident, you know? So what we did is we took all of the security features that we have, like pull printing, our access control, and what happens is, is through the cloud, we send a, an authentication code back to the smartphone. And then that end user takes that authentication code and when they go to that public print location, they input that so it knows who they are and then the print comes out. So, so okay, within the enterprise, <laughs> I got that. So I'm going to buy that Hong Kong thing, it's a good example, right? You don't want your <laughs> photos and or documents you know, kind of <laughs> leaking in the cloud. So, uh, so, so, to, so today oh, I hold would on, hold email on. that to myself. You didn't right? answer the question, developers. So, what's, is there a developer program, you guys working with developers? I'm a developer, I'm building an app. Say I'm building an Instagram-like app, I want to have photos, I'm a consumer, just a natural consumer. As a public consumer, can I use the, the print service and oh, say, sure. I want to print to say the oh, UPS office or something? Absolutely, I misunderstood. Yeah, absolutely, so there's really two options here, right? You can download this app on your smartphone. We, we you know, handle all the smartphones, Android, et cetera, Apple. Um, Blackberry, and uh, if, if you aren't an MPS customer, but you want to use this, you can download that application, and, and certainly you can print to a public print location. Now, if you're a part of MPS, and it's inside you know, the, the, the contract and, and our agreement, now you can print emails, you can do all of that work that you're describing, and then of course it's all uh, secure. Product. So that, that concept of the public print location is intriguing. So what, what do we do today? I, I, I email it to my Gmail account, right? Right. And I go find a, a laptop or something, and then, yes. then hopefully there's a printer there. Right? Absolutely. So, so what you're describing is is better, but it's it's almost like finding a hotspot, you know, a couple yeah. of years ago. Exactly. Right? Okay. Well, to to give you an example, today we have over 21,000 public print locations, and it continues to expand. I mentioned UPS. We just added 4,300 uh, with UPS. And um, this is a benefit for them because, right, our customers are coming into their store, into their locations. It's certainly a benefit for our MPS offer, and it keeps these people productive. I give you an interesting statistic. Since introducing this, and it hasn't been out that long, over 1.7 million downloads already. And it's, we anticipate doubling every six months. Do you that, have a breakdown on consumer, like non-enterprise, or? Well, what, the ones that I'm tracking, of course, are enterprise. Okay, so I it. don't have the statistics on the others. But I can tell you, interesting, you know, you're talking about different uses for this. Mm -hmm. And what we, we can track this, obviously, in, in um, what they're printing. And you know, you talk about consumerization of IT. 70% of the downloads have been documents, like you'd expect, emails, contracts, et cetera. 30% are photos. And it's interesting, <laughs> the 30% that are photos are typically on the weekend. And so what we're finding is, is that these people are using this e-print as a, an yeah, opportunity. It's a, it's a real and, chain game changer because that's the preferred user experience. And you know, we have other stats that we've gathered like ESPN's mobile usage. 75% of, uh, of their usage is on the weekends and mobile. Uh, obviously makes sense, you're, sure. uh, you're, you're, you're on, the, on the go, checking scores. Yes. So the, the consumer aspect is pretty interesting. Yes. Um, how do you guys have, handle that today? Is there a business model behind that? Is it more 
uh, transaction fee at the edge for this uh, location? Well, um, again, now I'm c coming from the enterprise side, but certainly we want to make this application available to our consumers, so there isn't a cost you know, for the application, and we're encouraging them to print, print responsibly, print the things that they need. On the enterprise side, it works within the MPS contract. So just as they pay us for the use or you know, for the things they print, um, they would pay us, of course, if they uh, printed through ePrint. Have you seen some cannibalization with the printer business on the, on the standalone connected printer and the managed services? If, if the use case is changing, is there some slight cannibalization on the product side that you're making up on the service? Or oh, without really? a doubt. Um, you know, clearly, if we're going to save our customers 30%, some of that's predicated on less printing, right? And what we want to do is get them to print smart. And really what this comes down to is, is that if you look at the environment, print, copy, all of this coming together, we want to help them reduce that, but we want to ultimately benefit by being able to uh, yeah. provide that service. You know service. the expression, eat your own before the competition does, yeah. right? You know, cannibalize your own business and well, grow and it another way. Remember too, there's a lot of upside in additional services. There's upside in applications, workflow, security applications. There's ways for us to streamline paper processes. Yeah, Ron was teasing us the, uh, the information governance and some of the document management uh, sure. challenges that you guys are now getting into sure. around compliance and with the autonomy well, acquisition. Think of the multifunction devices and on and off ramp into the network. A way yeah. to go from hard copy to digital it's and smart. back to hard copy. Smart so strategy. So we should talk about 30% was was, was Yeah, photos. you were intrigued by that, I yeah, can tell. Yeah, very much so. <laughs> and, and so I'm, 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 I'm intrigued by the, the dividing line between the consumer and the enterprise piece. So that's an enterprise stat or is that? That's of the of the uh, downloads okay, that we are so able to track through our cloud. So That's correct. Okay, so some of those are enterprise, so you don't really know, right? Or well, I, they're obviously customers. But enterprise so customers correct, have consumer sure. apps, right? Of course, so of course. No, I'm so not I'm suggesting like the photos aren't for work. They could be. They could be, <laughs> right. Uh, I'm sure they could be. But so, but the reason for my question is we've had that hotspot analogy. I'm thinking Starbucks, you know? Yeah. We're going to start seeing these type of services in Absolutely, in, in fact, hospitals. we continue to expand our, our public print locations. Mm -hmm. uh, Walmart, I mentioned Hilton. Um, you know, we look at air, airline lounges as a great example. Yeah. And you know, of course, with the, with the launch, we've just announced a, a couple enhancements. One of those that's really important is now 10 languages around the world. Because the 1.7 downloads that I was talking about are all English. And what we realized with this thing expanding and growing so much, that we needed to get into more languages and be able to expand this globally. Another key aspect is, you know, people sometimes go into an office and they want to be productive in that office. They're a virtual worker. So we've created, in, in a sense, a guest pass through ePrint that allows them to go into that office and in a controlled, secure environment, be able to print through ePrint. So you're not passing files or putting them on thumb drives and all those other things that are less secure. All right, oh, fantastic. A lot of innovation beyond color, John. <laughs> hey, it's, a, it's an exciting thing, you know, yeah. and uh, we're very, I tell you, this is a growth area for us. We're no. growing management service, and then when you add things like this ePrint, and you now allow people to be yeah. able to be more productive on the road, this thing just continues to grow Well, I'm, for us. I'm just excited to have the printer guys come on the queue because we tend to be much more, um, you know, conversion networking, enterprise, you know, real, you know, techs, tech uh, geeks around some of this conversation, <laughs> but I got to say, if you look at what HP's done with multifunction peripherals in the history, Office Chat was a breakthrough sure. product that everyone was like, ah, what? Uh, fax printing in one? Um, really was interesting that they created that kind of category. Here with the cloud, you can open up the functions no question. behind the door. Security, think about the, I've been in the IT industry 27 years now, and um, kind of a transplant into the printer group, right, from, from other areas. And um, the, I think the real power here is leveraging all the aspects of HP. So we talked about cloud, but think of software. Think of the benefits of scanning this and now being into disk storage and helping with document management. Think of the capabilities we have around service offerings and all of the extensions that we can now play out. So this is not like uh, the old printing group anymore. This is very much a part of all the things that HP is doing. You know, you know I always make the argument, I've been obviously a big vocal um, proponent of HP not spinning out their PC and their, their printer business. Um, for a lot of the reasons we're talking about is that if you look at the synergies that you bring in the channel, uh, access to customers on both the direct and indirect sides, phenomenally huge. And a lot of people don't understand, even Wall Street doesn't even understand that, but what we're talking about here is really a huge growth market where the printer business looks like a commodity consumer business, but actually is an enabler on the enterprise side. So, it's a disruptive you know, just business an, model. Another really. reason to keep the printer division in, uh, intact. Uh, <laughs> we believe that. We'll do the analysis. David, I've been talking <laughs> this, about this yeah. for a long you time. You know, I'll I tell you something. I was doing an interview a while back, and uh, they said, well, can I explain this whole thing if you're printing less? And I said, no, the way I would say it is we want customers to print responsibly. <laughs> I said it's like a beer commercial. You know, we're not telling you not to print, we're just telling you to print responsibly. <laughs> Fantastic.
All right, Bruce Dahlgren, thanks very much for coming inside theCUBE, sharing the perspectives. Like John said, it's a, a new dimension for us. We you really bet. appreciate the, uh, the angles. Dave, and, uh, John, thanks. You're okay. welcome. Uh, keep it right there. We'll be right back uh, with more coverage from HP Discover. We're live. This is theCUBE, siliconangle.tv. Keep it right there. <laughs>